Lilio from this Susie Vildes. Good afternoon po from Lisa de uh, Lilio. Sa dito kanina. At napakarami pa pala pagbati dito. So you read the chat box to get to know who among your friends and peers from all over the Philippines are here. So uh maraming salamat. Thank you for your comments. We are now ready to start our session. And as a Catholic agency, as a Catholic institution, CAP activities always starts with a prayer. Start with a prayer. Let us bless this session with a short invocation in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let go and let God. Today, I let go and I let God take charge of this life of mine. Now in the dark corners of my soul, His light is beginning to shine. All of the cares and worries that I have carried around for so long, He has lifted them from my shoulders and filled my heart with love. Problems that were overwhelming suddenly seem very small and come what may, starting today, I know I can handle them all. Lord Jesus, I beg for the grace to understand and appreciate those who are seeking for knowledge and wisdom so that I may remain firm and constant in my resolve to love and serve God through education. Let us proclaim with our lips the mystery we believe with our hearts. Together, we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. God speaks and the darkness is shattered and everything comes to be. Silence is broken and man's hopes will flower. His joys bloom as the word is uttered. He has created the world in his only begotten son, the image of his power and the likeness of his glory. He made the sunlight and the raindrops and the clouds and the flowers. He created all people of every race and nation who take shape in his son to become God's people. Jesus Christ, the divine word, is word of God, our grace and our truth of one substance with the Father. Blessings be yours from the divine word who was with the Father in the beginning, and it took flesh from the Virgin Mother to be our Savior. Divine incarnate word, give us life by your spirit and bring us back to the Father. This is what we proclaim to you. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked upon and touched. We speak of the word of life. That life became visible. We have seen and bear witness to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life that was present to the Father and became visible to us. In the midst of the flashing neon darkness, we dare this day to celebrate the light. In the midst of the bloated, gorged starvation, we dare this day to celebrate the bread. In the midst of the bottled bubbling thirst and water shortage, we dare this day to celebrate the water. In the midst of the smothered knowing doubt, we dare this day to celebrate faith. In the midst of relentless dark despair, 
we dare this day to celebrate hope. In the midst of frantic, laughing death, merciless killings, injustice, we dare this day to celebrate life. In the midst of blaring, shouting silence, we dare this day to celebrate the word. Let us pray. Father, you are the source of all joy and happiness. Yet, we, your children, have looked elsewhere and sought to satisfy ourselves with the cheap pleasure the world offers. We have sought entertainment and diversions, missing the peace and inward meaning that your word has offered. We have let the world squeeze us into a mold. We have let media and the internet shape our values and the movies to guide our actions. Forgive us, O oh God, and make us your words in the word so that we will know you and him whom you sent. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in union with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Footprints in the sand He held me in His hand and gave me strength to face the coming day At times I Last night I had a dream. I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. And across the sky flashed scenes from my life. And for each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to me, and the other to the Lord. And after the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand, and I noticed that many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. Footprints in the sand, he held me in his hand. Now this really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and lowest times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. And I don't understand why when I needed you the most, you would leave me. And the Lord replied, my son, my precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your times of suffering, when you could see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Footprints in the sand, he held me in his hand, he gave me strength to face the coming day. When times I felt alone, I was never on my own, someday I'll understand. Footprints in the sand.
Good afternoon once again, and thank you for that refreshing prayer. The Campus Ministry Office of St. Paul University, Manila. Magandang uh, hapon sa inyo at maraming salamat sa prayer service na yan. You know, we are able to conduct free sessions like this because of our sponsors and partners as well, whose videos you've seen a while ago. Let us therefore together thank Diwa Publishing Company, Phoenix Publishing Company, and Rex Bookstore and Publications for allowing us to continue to bring to you worthy programs like this one. If you want to see our past webinars from May to November, you may visit the CAP channel on YouTube. Please like the page and press the notification button so that you are notified every time we have new materials for you. But this one is ex exclusive and it's not shown live. So as you very well know, some of your friends are asking you, bakit ikaw nakapasok, kami hindi nakapasok? Meron ka tayong registration. We have uh, limited uh, participants for, for the webinars today. So thank you all. We shall now have the message of the CAP President, Sister Maria Marisa R. Viri, RVM. Greetings to the National Basic Education Commission members led by Sister Felicitas Bernardo, SPC, our esteemed resource persons and facilitators, members of the CAP board, and all school administrators and faculty of CAP member schools, as well as non-CAP member schools all over the Philippines attending in this virtual assembly. I am sending you my warmest greetings from Davao City. How wonderful it is that wherever we may be in the Philippines, despite the threat of the COVID-19 pandemic, we can still gather as one community of educators to address pressing issues confronting us. Last week, the CAP National Board came together to review the CAP strategic plan approved in the previous year. The unexpected situation that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought us necessitated us to review our goals and the priorities we had set pre-COVID because we always said to be responsive to the times and situation. We must always be ready in this volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous or VUCA world. After the review of our goals, we then had a strategic road mapping. The two-day event was an occasion for listening and discernment as we took stock of the situation that we are in. We listened to the wisdom of thought leaders. We listened to each other as we assess our strengths and weaknesses as an organization. And then prayerfully discerned our next course of action as an organization by charting a roadmap for CAP for the next two years. In the said strategic road mapping, we affirmed our mission with the three big ideas of unity of action, transformative education, and advocacy. As the largest educational association in our country, our strength is in our solidarity. By working together and sharing resources and best practices, we can confront problems that we are faced with. We do so in the light of the gospel, with Jesus as the foundation of our educational institutions. When COVID-19 happened, the CAP board immediately created the CAP Task Force COVID-19 for institutional assessment and responses to help our member schools craft a school continuity plan to cope with a very trying situation and survive the devastating effects of the pandemic. After that, CAP conducted four legs of webinars on various topics to help our member schools transition to the new and hopefully better normal. And we continue to look after our schools with various initiatives like this virtual NBEC assembly. After nine months in quarantine, most of us have established stability in our school operations 
in light of COVID-19, with distance learning being the primary mode of delivery. We have more or less identified what works well and what needs improvement in our different contexts. So today, we come together again in Comunio as one strong association of schools helping each other, holding one another's hand as we forge on to the next normal. We are here again for a day of listening and discernment as we open the ear of our hearts to various sharing of best practices of CAP schools in 2020-2021 COVID-19 school year. May this day truly fulfills what we set out in our objectives. And as we continue to share in the evangelizing mission of the church through transformative education, may we do so through meaningful collaboration, co-responsibility, and solidarity, forging meaningful partnerships to make Catholic education responsive to the challenges of the contemporary world. I wish you all a very productive day in the CAP and Beck Virtual Assembly. Thank you very much. May God bless us all. Thank you, Sister Marisa, for that inspiring message and for the update on what's happening in the CAP National Board. I know the board has been busy even during the pandemic. We've been uh, having more meetings than ever before because we have to respond to the various challenges brought about by the pandemic. Now, let us listen to Sister Felicitas Bernardo, SPC, Chair of the National Basic Education Commission to set the perspective and context of our session this afternoon. One big opportunity the virus COVID-19 has brought to all of us is this SEAP NBEC 2020, thank God, pushed to the new normal where there is a limited supply or amount of resources, both human and material. We now find ways to learn from one another. Feeling the need for teacher to look to the next teacher. For school to look to the next school. An educational system to look to the next educational system. We bring you this first ever online National Basic Education Conference. And God willing, starting January 2021 onwards, we will gather again to strengthen continuing leadership and management education for instructional leaders. This is so that schools will become more agile and highly adaptive to the VUCA world. We need new strategies that will make our schools more sustainable and resilient in facilitating transition of learners from school to the real world. Train teachers to be experts not in teaching, but rather in assessing student learning, in creating student learning. Inspired by our standards contained in the learner development domain of PCSS, we dare to embark on our ROI or return on instruction. An instruction that is Amoy Katoliko, Lasang Katoliko, Mukhang Katoliko, Buhay Katoliko. The sustainability and relevance of Catholic schools in the Philippines are challenged by the radical changes in a highly volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous learning environment. The occurrence of COVID-19 crisis has caused drastic changes in the delivery of instruction 
and school operations. Even after this crisis, the emergence of smart technologies, evolution of Philippine society, changing behavior of learners, among other uncontrollable factors, will definitely push the Catholic schools further to shift from default teaching learning practices to something that will empower students to develop more holistically and learn more independently in a more flexible and blended learning modalities. Thus, this school year, the SEAP NBEC series of conferences becomes an opportune time for decision makers and stakeholders to come up with plausible solutions to make Catholic education in the country achieve a dramatic impact amid changing times. Thus, this one-day conference with a theme, Authentic Integral Formation and Seamless Learning in the Age of Disruption, Best Practices of SEAP Schools in 2020-2021 COVID-19 School Year, will inspire the Catholic school community with stories of creativity, collaboration, and capability building in addressing the complexities experienced in the areas of online distance learning, modular distance learning, socio-emotional learning, cheat-proofing assessments, and assisting parents and families as educational partners. Evaluate current implementation of learning continuity and mechanized interventions whenever necessary based on the current practices shared by the champion schools or school systems. We continue to reflect upon the vision and mission and transformative role of Catholic education in the VUCA world. So today, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., there will be three concurrent sessions. Session A is on assessment and evaluation of learning in online distance learning and blended platforms to be facilitated by Dr. Teresita Arcos Surot, Directress of Holy Family of Quezon City. The sharers are Mrs. Tess Ladrido, the Academic Supervisor, Savior School Incorporated, and Ms. Marilyn De Castro, Principal, Basic Education, St. Mary's College, Quezon City. Session B will be on Modular Distance Learning, to be facilitated by Father Nolan Ke. SEAP NCR trustee, school director from the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Manila Educational System. The sharers are Mr. Paul John Gabay, council member, curriculum and research development, Apo Jose Catholic Educational Foundation Incorporated, and Ms. Perlita Dohinog, Principal, Notre Dame of Lambayong, Sultan Kudarat. Session C will be an online distance learning to be facilitated by Father Mauricio T. Olip, SEAP Trustee at Large, Director, Claret School of Quezon City. The sharers are Mr. Benedicto Pascual, Principal, Espiritu Santo Parochial School of Manila, Incorporated, and Mr. Francis Kalilan, the Senior High School Academic Coordinator, St. Paul University, Manila. 
question and answer portion follows at around 11 a.m. to 12 noon. And the morning ends with a closing prayer prepared by the Christian Formation Team of St. Paul University, Manila. There will be two concurrent sessions in the afternoon. Session D is on effective strategies for engaging parents and caregivers in the learning process. To be facilitated by Dr. Amelia Ronquillo, Paasco Elementary Accreditor. The sharers are Melissa Espirito, Principal, St. Joseph Academy of Las Pinas, Incorporated, and Mr. Ringo Blanca, High School Assistant Principal for Academics, Colegio San Agustin, Makati. Session E is on social and emotional learning to be facilitated by Mr. Jose Alan Arellano, SEAP Executive Director. The sharers are Ms. Janine Doloricon, Senior High School Guidance Counselor, Claret School of Quezon City, and Brother Jeff Piocinto, SJ, Formation Coordinator, Basic Education, Ateneo de Zamboanga University. The question and answer portion follows at around 4.30 p.m. And the afternoon ends with a closing prayer also prepared by the Christian Formation Team of St. Paul University, Manila. Thank you, and may we all have a grace-filled learning experience the whole day. Thank you, Sister Tas, for that very informative perspective setting and contextualization of what we are doing uh, at the National Basic Education Commission. No? It's, an, it's a perspective setting for the next few years. Ganun kahaba ang planning ni Sister. Thank you for leading us sa NBEC. Uh, now, let me introduce the first sharer. Her talk is on authentic integral formation. Ms. Janine Doloricon is a registered guidance counselor, RGC, in Claret School of Quezon City, an exclusive school for boys run by the Claritian Missionary Fathers. Ten years ago, she graduated from the Philippine Normal University. I also graduated there. That's my alma mater. Twenty years before her. Janine finished her Master of Arts in Education also from the PNU, major in Guidance and Counseling. Two years ago, Janine is one of the top notchers in the professional licensure examination for guidance counselors, landing at number four overall. So congratulations for that. And thank you, Father Mao Ulep, for allowing Ms. Janine to share today her experience in your school. Let us watch her presentation. Hi, Ms. Janine here, a senior high school guidance counselor from Claret School of Quezon City. Allow me to provide you with some information about our school. Claret School of Quezon City is a Paasco accredited Catholic school located in Diliman, Quezon City. It is named after its patron saint, St. Anthony Mary Claret, who was the founder of the Congregation of the Missionary Sons of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Established in June 1967, the school is owned and managed by the Claritian Missionaries or the CMF. The Claritian education, guided by Ciencia Maxime Cumbertute, essentially aims to mold students whose acquired knowledge is best lived out in virtue. We have a current population of over 2,000 students. And as a response to the present challenging situation brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, the school has adopted an education continuity plan through Claret Operative Distance Education, or CODE. The CODE is implemented through online learning 
with the safety and overall well-being of all Clarisians in mind. To facilitate and strengthen this transition, the school is continuously collaborating with its stakeholders, the parents and the whole community, to elicit support and cooperation in the delivery of quality education in this challenging time. So that's about our school. But for this afternoon, I am actually tasked to talk about um, social and emotional learning or some of the best practices during the COVID-19 pandemic or when most of us are doing online distance learning. Um, in fact, uh, around the world, uh, educators have emphasized that there is a need to incorporate activities in the school program that will focus more on the social and emotional needs and development of the students. As an example, Wendy Turner, an elementary school teacher in the USA, said that this uh, COVID-19 pandemic has stolen our students' uh, school experience. Uh, they, they miss their teachers, uh, their friends, uh, their classmates, and the feeling of being together and being connected. That's why we have to work on relationship skills and to teach each other on how to talk properly to one another. It's more important than ever right now. Another teacher in India, a preschool teacher in India, when she was asked, what is the most important thing that we should teach our students during this online education? The teacher said that humans are social beings and it is imperative for them to possess social and emotional skills prior to acquiring other skills and to survive and thrive in their social settings. So it means that before a student could learn something, uh, to be able to survive in any type of situation, then we must first uh, develop their social and emotional skills. Also, in our country here in the Philippines, uh, Bryant Atencia, a high school teacher in Laguna, uh, he said that now that he's doing online classes, he tries to touch the emotion, try to touch base with the students and their parents, and to build relationship that would make the students more comfortable in taking lessons online. But the biggest question is, why is there a clamor about social and emotional learning now more than ever? Why do we want to why do we want our students to have adequate self-awareness, uh, self-regulation. Why do we want them to be socially aware or to have good relationship skills or to be responsible decision makers? Not that we're doing things online because we realize that when our students feel that they are socially and emotionally safe, when they believe in their skills and in their abilities, uh, when they have developed skills to cope with stress, negative emotions, or how to deal with people in different situations, then we know that they would have better academic performance, whether face-to-face -face education or online education. They would have better social interactions and increased pro-social behaviors. They would have improved classroom behaviors and fewer conduct problems. They would have a sound mental health and they would have a higher probability of thriving, adjusting, and succeeding in diverse situations such as what we are facing right now. So these are just some of the benefits of enhancing and developing the social and emotional uh, skills of our students. So for this afternoon, Allow me to share with you some of the best practices of Claret School of Quezon City when it comes to incorporating and integrating social and emotional learning in our, in our guidance and counseling program. I will be discussing this in four parts. One is the planning and development, then the implementation, evaluation, and I will also be sharing with you some of the challenges and recommendations. Uh, planning and development. 
While we were planning our program for this school year, we have uh, five goals in mind. Goal number one is to re-examine the existing program and make necessary adjustment according to the school's continuity plan and the student's need. So when the school provided us with its education continuity plan, and in there, it was stated that the Student Development Center, our guidance office, continues its commitment to ensure that each student has a positive emotional disposition as well as a healthy and sound mind. The Education Continuity Plan or the code also emphasizes that less is more and to follow the do no harm principle. So with this in mind, we know that our uh, program should focus only on the most essential activities that would cater to the well-being and mental health of our students. So with that, we are able to formulate our program's objective, which are the following. Uh, we aim to provide mental health and social emotional support services and activities to students, parents, and teachers in the new educational context. We work coll collaboratively to all stakeholders as it continues its existing support programs and services that promote student success and well-being through digital and online platform. Uh, we are also committed in providing online support as new set of behaviors and circumstances emerge in this critical time. Uh, after that, we decided to only retain services that would cater or would address or would make us implement the goals that we have created for our program. So for the school year, our services include uh, STC online check-in, which I will be discussing further with you later. We also have counseling and referral services, follow-up service, group guidance period, virtual conferences with teachers, parents, other school personnel, and even outside uh, professionals. We also have webinars uh, for students, parents, and teachers, and online testing and assessment. So after we, we were able to formulate our program's objectives and to specify the services that we will provide our students and our uh, school community for this school year, the next goal is uh, to assess, to assess the social and emotional needs of the students. Therefore, we created an online needs assessment survey uh, we ask all our students to accomplish this form, and from their responses, we are able to gather important data, such as uh, the current state of students' general well-being, um, their pandemic experiences, their online distance uh, learning readiness and concerns, uh, topics for group guidance period, and most importantly, we were able to identify students who we need to be priorit prioritized for check-in and counseling sessions, okay? And then our next goal is to collaborate with all stakeholders, the parents, because parent uh, engagement during this time is very important and very crucial. Uh, that's why as early as the quarantine period, we at the guidance office already reach out to our parents uh, through series of email correspondences uh, we ask them about how uh, the, fa the entire family are, are we're doing, how's our student, uh, and we also try to determine if they need any assistance or any help when it comes to school-related uh, concern. So we have provided them with ways and means on how they can contact us, and we encourage them uh, to get in touch with us if they deemed it necessary. We also closely collaborated with of course, our school administrators, and with our teachers. For our teachers, we conducted teachers' counselor meeting. So in this meeting, we were able to provide our teachers with some background information and um, level profile for the students that they will be handling uh, for this school year. And aside from the mental health webinars, a webinar for teachers, uh, during our teachers' counselor meeting, we also provided the teachers with some self-care tips. 
because we also have to make sure that our teachers are ready to do online classes. They have to be prepared not only physically, but emotionally, psychologically, and mentally ready to do online classes. And another thing, for the homeroom programs, some of the advisors would reach out to the counselors and ask them for some ideas on how they can incorporate social and emotional learning into their own homeroom programs, okay? Another goal is to work together with the online learning support services of the school. So we have coordination meetings with our librarians because they will be able to provide some reading resources and reading materials that might be relevant for the social and emotional needs of our students. And then we also have coordination meetings with our faith education and enrichment department or our feed because they also have uh, activities for our students uh, which caters also to the social and emotional needs of our students such as recollection and dialogue with the spiritual directors and the uh, spiritual director and the likes okay and then lastly our final goal while we were planning and developing our program for this school year is to enhance the capacity of the counselors and the staff by providing them with relevant skills, knowledge, and training necessary to implement the program effectively. Uh, because none of us uh, are able to conduct online services before, online counseling before, it was very important for us to attend training. So we have uh, attended a series of trainings on how to uh, utilize and how to navigate our online platform. In our case, at Claret School of Quezon City, uh, we are using Microsoft Teams. So we attended trainings on how to navigate and how to use utilize uh, MS Teams for the implementation of our services and our uh, activities. And one thing more is that we uh, need to make sure that the privacy and confidentiality issues uh, can be addressed when we use this platform. Because as you all know, confidentiality and safety and security is very uh, are very important aspect of when you do online counseling okay and then we also uh, attended uh, webinars and some some of us even opted to attend online courses and workshop about how to properly conduct online counseling so we need to make sure that we are skilled adept and we know how to conduct uh, online counseling uh, properly Okay, so that's about uh, planning and development. Moving on to implementation, uh, for the delivery of our services, we uh, ensure that the following uh, work carried out. Number one, orient the students about the program and guidelines on how the services will be delivered in the new setup. So we have conducted uh, orientation programs for our students, uh, wherein we discuss with them our program, uh, our services for this school year, and what are the activities that we have prepared for them. Uh, we also inform them on how they will be able to reach us. We have provided them with some reminders on what to do before and during uh, online check-ins and counseling sessions. Um, and then after that, we have provided our students with a venue where they can reach out and establish meaningful and supportive relationships. Because remember, when we were doing face-to-face uh, -face classes, our students uh, know how, when, and where they can reach their counselors. So now that we're doing it online, we have also uh, instructed them on how they can reach us. So the students are able to establish meaningful and supportive interaction with their counselors via number one the scheduled group guidance period or our guidance classes which is scheduled once a month and also they're able to reach us during consultation period uh, which is every day after their class hours so the students know that during consultation period they can reach out to their counselors they can schedule a session with their counselors and basically um, talk about whatever concerns that they have okay. so after that we also scheduled regular emotion check-ins uh, and online kumustahan with our students again 
as early as the quarantine period, some of uh, our uh, some of us counselors already reached out to some of our students, especially those who we considered at risk or those who need who need to be followed up because school ended abruptly. So we get in touch with them and just find out how they how they were coping during the quarantine period. Okay, and when online classes start already, uh, we have scheduled uh, emotions, uh, feelings, our mental health check-ins, however you might want to call it, uh, with our students. So the online check-ins is an individual individual session between the student and the counselor, wherein the students are free to express whatever concerns they have about uh, the pandemic, what, what they are experiencing during the pandemic, their online distance learning concerns and issues, and any uh, personal uh, issues or concerns that they, may, uh, that they may have. And then we also have what we call the online kumustahan. This is usually done uh, during group guidance period. So we allot certain uh, minutes to conduct online kumustahan. And the school actually realizes the importance of doing online kumustahan that they have even uh, adopted it during monthly level assembly. And there are some advisors, homeroom advisors, who also make use of online kumustahan during their uh, weekly homeroom program. So as much as possible, we try to be very creative and interactive with our online kumustahan. So for example, with this one, uh, we just utilize the chat box. We ask the students to uh, uh, comment down their feeling for that particular day. How would they rate their online experience or online performance so far? And to uh, uh, let us know what are their current stressors. But uh, you can try different types of online kumustahan. For example, during my last uh, group guidance class, for my online kumustahan, I made use of a mindfulness type of uh, emotion check-in. So in this activity, I asked my student to take a break, uh, to pause for a while, to let go of any distracting thoughts. And then I asked them to pay attention to their emotions, uh, what they are feeling at that, what were they feeling at that moment. I asked them to do a body scan on what particular body part can they feel their emotion. Uh, uh, is it in their head? Uh, stomach, on their back, on their chest, and then I ask them to focus, to take some time to describe how does that particular body part uh, feels like. Uh, was it tight? Was it trembling, sweaty, uh, throbbing? Was it numb? And then I ask them to pay attention to their thoughts. So what exactly is on their mind that, that is related or uh, connected to how they were feeling at that time? So. You see, a simple activity as this one, my major goal then was to find out the most common emotion my students were feeling at that time. But through this activity, I was able to help my student pay attention to their emotions and to their thoughts. So uh, in, in the, in, at the same time, I'm actually teaching my students a simple coping strategy. Uh, because I help them identify, name, or recognize and acknowledge their emotions. I, I let them know that whatever thoughts they have, it might be related or might be connected to their emotions. So again, you are already teaching a simple coping strategy by just doing a simple activity or online kumustahan as this one, by uh, empowering your students to uh, get to know their feelings so that they can be more in control. Okay, uh, we also made use of some uh, online applications such as uh, Mentimeter or um, Slido.com. I don't know if you're familiar with these, but you can Google them and try to see how you can use these on your own uh, activities. And then we can also make use of games. For example, one of our grade school uh, counselors uh, for the online kumustahan made use of the Family Feud game format. So for the online kumustahan, the counselor asked the students what they miss most about the school. So it has it had generated a lot of responses, a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions, and it was a good springboard for an online kumustahan session. So again, just be fun, be creative, and be interactive with your online kumustahan or with any uh, activities that you have. Okay, And then we also share different coping strategies that will help students 
adjust to new normal and to online learning. Remember, we ask our students to uh, accomplish uh, a needs assessment survey. And based on their responses, we were able to know what particular topics they want us to provide them with coping strategies. So we are able to provide them with coping, uh, coping strategies related to uh, managing emotions, resiliency, stress management, time management, online learning etiquette, helping others, and career. Okay? And then we also made sure that we promote opportunities for self-reflection and decision-making. Remember, self-reflection and decision-making are major aspects of social and emotional learning. That's why as much as possible, we try to make our activities during GGPs uh, uh, focus more on self-reflection and decision-making. So we have um, journal, brainstorming, situational, asking for insights, or any activities that would make our students think, reflect, and come up with compassionate and responsible decisions. Okay? And then finally, for the implementation, we uh, acknowledge that we cannot provide all the necessary information or help to our students by just making uh, online check-ins and counseling session and group guidance classes. So we also made available to students um, various informative resources and reference materials. So uh, we have created posters, uh, posted or stub uh, published in our Claret uh, Student Central. Uh, on tips how to become a successful online learner, how to survive online classes, a uh, poster about uh, mental health awareness, or poster encouraging, encouraging them to go and reach out and talk to their counselors, and any other materials or resources that could help them whenever they feel overwhelmed with their concern, with their emotions, so that they know what to do and who, when, and how they can reach out to people that might be able to help them. Okay. So that's about the implementation. But we know that not all programs are perfect and ours is not, but we continually to work on it and to evaluate our uh, services and our activities so that we know uh, what part we still need to work on or to improve on. And we do evaluation by, number one, observing regular meetings to evaluate and monitor progress. So we conduct uh, regular meetings. Uh, during the meetings, we were able to uh, know how a partic particular activity went. Uh, we were able to know how many students are already called for their check-ins or counseling session, and uh, to know what are the most common concerns raised. So all the information that uh, we gathered from these services, from these activities, uh, we also shared them to the school administrators. And again, uh, to, the, to the teachers, we conducted teachers counselor meeting. We informed the teachers of some of the concerns or academic related concerns of the students so that they could address it or they could do something about it. And in return, our teachers also provide us with uh, insights and observations and concerns about uh, the class or about particular students. Now, all of this uh, new information that we have gathered, that we have gained, it was also serve as a way to evaluate if our current programs or current activities or current services are still addressing the immediate current concerns and needs of our students. Okay. And then also our, our uh, coordinator uh, conducts observations and feedback giving. So our uh, coordinator is present in most of our guidance classes so that uh, the coordinator would also know how the uh, GGPs or how the activity went out and to provide uh, feedback for the counselor so that they would enhance and improve on or work on their facilitation uh, skills. And then for the evaluation, we also try to utilize technology and be creative when it comes to evaluation. So uh, we made use of the uh, Microsoft Forms, the easiest way to evaluate any program. But we also try to make use of just the chat box and asking students of their uh, comment or their insights or their opinion or their suggestions and recommendations. We also make use of reflection papers and uh, join us. Okay, so again, we, we try to uh, use different types of uh, 
evaluation tool or forms to know and evaluate any activities or program that we have. Okay, so again, we utilize technology, uh, MS forms, uh, uh, insights to evaluate our program. And then at this part, allow me to share with you some of the challenges and recommendations that uh, uh, we had when we were planning, developing, and implementing and evaluating our program. So for the challenges, these are the challenges that we have encountered while we were planning and developing, but still continue to face until now. Okay, so number one, internet connectivity. As we all know, internet connectivity can sometimes interfere with the quality of the audio and video. And then it may affect the verbal and nonverbal cues that are very essential to counseling. So sometimes, uh, due to poor internet connectivity, it can mess up with the audio and video. So it can lead to misinterpretations, misunderstandings, and miscommunication. And sometimes it can be uh, very frustrating for the part of the teach of the counselor and the students, if, especially if we keep asking them to uh, if to repeat what they have just said, or if we keep asking them if they can hear us and vice versa. So again, internet connectivity actually interfere with the quality of most if not all the services that we provide our students simply because we are doing it online next uh, challenge is time allotment the time allotted for online check-in and counseling which is during consultation period is not enough to call for as many students as needed uh, unlike before when we were doing face-to-face -face, uh, classes we are allowed to pull out or call students uh, during class hours so for example if they have classes from 7 30 to 3 30 we're allowed to call out and pull out students during those hours but now that we're doing it online we're only allowed to do check-ins and counseling during consultation period and it may not be enough to cater or to call as many students as we want to okay uh, then without prior notice or giving a reason why some students don't make it on the scheduled check-in or counseling sessions. I'm telling you, it's truly heartbreaking if a student fails to attend the session simply because, again, we have limited time to actually conduct uh, online check-ins and counseling sessions. And then, students tend to be apprehensive to open up during check-in uh, counseling uh, sessions due to lack of private space at home. This is very much evident in uh, high school students. You would notice that some students, even those who were very uh, talkative, expressive, and very open and very honest, when we were having a face-to-face counseling session, uh, it appeared like they're not that uh, open anymore or they're not that comfortable. Maybe because in the same room, uh, they have their siblings there only also doing online classes or the, their parents is also there in the same room as them. So some students uh, don't appear comfortable or at ease or very much open when doing check-ins and online counseling due to a lack of private space at home. And then finally, for our challenges, Working beyond office hours has become inevitable. I know there are a lot of factors related to this one, but maybe we can also uh, uh, attribute this to the limited consultation period that we have. Since uh, we cannot uh, call as many students as we need, uh, we tend to extend our office hours so that we could cater to more of our students. Okay, so these are some of the challenges that we faced then and we still continue to face until now. For the last part of my sharing, uh, I will be sharing with you some of the recommendations and guidelines that we keep in mind as we were planning our program. And maybe you can also learn something from this. Number one, acknowledge that all program and activities during face-to-face -face education cannot be replicated. I know, no matter how tempting it, it is to uh, get all your good activities and services then and to still uh, apply it in our online setup, Sometimes we can't because you have to understand that there are limit the online platform, the online um, setup uh, have its limitations. And sometimes uh, there are certain activities or services that may not be relevant or applicable in this setup. So uh, you cannot. Uh, you cannot use all the programs, all the activities, all the services that you have during face-to-face -face education now that we're doing it online. 
which will lead us to the second recommendation. Since, since you cannot do that, you have to focus on the most essential activities that will cater to the social and emotional needs of your students. So you just have to pick up and prioritize uh, activities uh, that would cater to the social and emotional needs of your students. Okay, another recommendation. Explore and maximize technology available in the online platform. Again, I keep saying this, be fun, be creative, be interactive with your approaches. So remember, like in our case, our group guidance class uh, happens only once a month. So we have to make sure that our students would actually look forward to it. We have to make sure that any activities that we would give our students, the counselors and the students will actually look forward to it. So again, just be creative, be fun. Don't be afraid of technology. Uh, try to explore on how you can uh, make your uh, activities more interactive for the students, okay? Another recommendation, continue to learn, adapt, adjust, and refine your program. Like if in the middle of the school year, you think that there are some parts or some aspects of your program that you think you want to uh, adjust or to refine, or there are certain activities that you think you need to change, then go ahead. Because remember that your work is still a work in progress. Your program is still a work in progress because we are all new to this uh, online education. So don't be afraid to make some changes, make some revision to refine uh, your program. And then lastly, don't be too hard on yourself. Be kind. You are doing your best. Uh, because we are all new to this, uh, nobody expects us to actually be an expert already or to have it all figured out. So I hope that uh, you would take it one day at a time, one step at a time. I hope that you would be easy on yourself. I hope that you wouldn't uh, keep beating yourself up. I hope you wouldn't catch yourself saying that, uh, I, I know I'm a good counselor, but why is it I feel like I'm not so good now that I'm doing it online? Uh, please, please remember, you cannot teach and talk about uh, social and emotional learning if you yourself don't know how to address your own social and emotional needs. Okay, so that's about it. Again, uh, I am Ms. Janine from Claret School of Quezon City. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Janine. Ms. Janine talked about the ongoing efforts. Of, I cannot see myself. The ongoing efforts of the Claritian educational community to face the challenges posed by the pandemic, related lockdowns and home-based schooling. She emphasized that human beings as social beings need to interact and the opportunities and the skills must be taught even during the online interaction. She talked about developing student self-awareness, self-regulation, um, social awareness, relationship skills, responsible decision-making, and she shared to us the processes that Claret School of Quezon City followed in catering to the social and emotional needs of the students according to their existing school continuity plan. Our next sharer, is from Ateneo de Sambuanga University. Brother Jeff Piocquinto would, Piocquinto would be talking about human formation despite the restrictions. Brother Pio graduated from Claret High School and Ateneo de Sambuanga University, BSED major in history. Pareho kayo ni Ms. Janina, mayroong background ng Claritian uh, education. Brother Jeff has started this uh, MA in Educational Leadership and Management at Ateneo de Davao University 2017. He had his European tertianship, tertianship in Dublin, Ireland from 2015-2016. Taught at Clogus West, Clogus West Wood College, Clade, Ireland. He was a vocation director in East Timor and assistant principal is an extensive experience teaching history. He is now Assistant Principal of Formation at the Ateneo de Sambuanga University. Let us now welcome Brother Jeff to talk about seamless learning in the age of disruption. This is Brother Jeff Yoquinto on human formation despite the restriction. Human formation despite the restriction. 
UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said that we are at a foundational moment. Our world is struggling. Describing COVID-19 as both as a wake-up call and a dress rehearsal for future challenges. He said, we must move forward with humility. At the same time, with hope and resiliency in facing these new challenges. Since this is our foundational moment, it's time to go back to the basic and reinvent what is needed to change and adapt for the better. Going back to the basic is going back to our mission on why we are in the educational ministry. That is, to provide a space for our students where they can flourish and bloom as person. How do we form our teachers and students in order for them to bloom and flourish? We challenge our students and teachers to cultivate life-affirming virtues, lively imagination, healthy and critical minds, and compassionate hearts. Most of our school formation focuses on the spiritual formation, which is very essential in a Catholic school. But true Christian formation is holistic formation, forming not only the intellectual or spiritual aspect of a person, but also the psychological and emotional and social well-being of our students and teachers. Holistic education is a clear departure from the knowledge transmission approach to education that has been familiar in the past. Holistic education prepares students for lifelong learning in which the education, educational focus moves towards the life skills, attitudes, and personal awareness that the students will need in an increasingly completely different world. Here, there is an emphasis on a broad educational approach that addresses the intellectual, spiritual, psychological, and interpersonal development of the students and puts in place many of the values, attitudes, skills that will serve the students well throughout life. Such broad development cannot be claimed by the knowledge-laden education system that had been dominated for so many years. It brings closer the realization of learning to be, that is, learning to be men and women for others. Because spiritual formation must accompany the intellectual, psychological, social, and physical formation of our students. We hope to foster habits of personal prayer and reflection and being attentive to one interior movement, especially our emotions. Human formation is dynamic. We therefore attempt to show how our faith is actualized and seen in everything we do. The basic goal of our human formation is for our students and teachers to flourish, for them to be a better person and able to make a good discernment and contribute well to the society. A person flourishing and blooming is a person who is sound intellectually, spiritually, psychologically, and emotionally. How is human formation possible in this age of the pandemic given that there are lots of restrictions? Again, the world is struggling to adapt to the new normal amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. With many schools are thrown to this situation and we are asked to urgently adapt, understanding how to succeed in our new normal is essential. Most schools are merely surviving, but there are schools who are actually thriving. The state of the people in a school somewhat tell us the state of the school itself. Here are the matrix of the state of mental health adopted from Watson and Companion in 2013. For example, the signs of people surviving in school setting are the following. Nervousness, the feeling of sadness, increased mood fluctuation, inconsistent performance, more easily overwhelmed or irritated, increase the need for control and difficulty in adjusting to changes. And these are the signs of people who are thriving. People who are calm and steady with minor mood fluctuation, 
able to take things in stride, consistent performance, able to take feedback, and to adjust to changes of plans, able to focus, and able to communicate effectively. With mental health, we need to be taking care of each other, including ourselves. We need to address stress and anxiety in our school. For if left unaddressed, it can deteriorate into crisis. So what makes them try? Other than good leadership and careful planning, in order for our students and teachers to flourish and to grow more, and given the situation and restrictions of the pandemic, new skills and competencies are needed for one to grow holistically. And these are the skills needed. First, the digital and technical skills. Second, creativity. Third, resiliency. Fourth, adaptability. Fifth, collaboration. And sixth, communication. There are traps to avoid in this new normal. First is what we call the academic trap. We all know that everyone is struggling in this new normal. They say, mass low before bloom. We hear it all the time. The idea that educators should meet students' basic needs for safety, belonging, and well-being before turning to challenging academic tasks is one that guides the work of many schools these days. Because of too many demands from academics, teachers sometimes simply don't have the time to plan for brain breaks or to check in with students regularly to make sure they are feeling okay. Child psychiatrist Pamela Cantor told Edutopia in 2019 that when we are able to combine social, emotional, affective, and cognitive development together, we are creating many, many more interconnections in the developing brain that enables our students to accelerate learning and development, making time to integrate social and emotional learning into academics. In other words, it is a better way for schools to achieve their goals than focus on academics alone. Second is the so-called assessment trap, or on the focus on what do I have to produce versus what am I learning from this lesson. Problematic assessment practices have taught learners that grades is the goal. We take the focus off what students are expected to produce and place it on the act of learning or the process. Focusing on the process rather than on the product reduces stress and anxiety on the part of our students. The third is the so-called online migration trap. Most of us migrated to online teaching and learning, but somehow, we didn't actually plan well and use the medium properly. The trap here is our tendency just to bring everything we do during our normal days of teaching and learning to online teaching and learning, without considering the context and the fact that there are things we need to plan and implement when we do online teaching and learning. Example, a teacher is used in giving lectures, and when he or she goes online, one has the tendency to give lectures as well, rather than innovating and creatively present his or her lessons according to the context of the medium being used. This is the appropriate time to use our discomfort to forge a new paradigm. This is now the time for the school to ensure that teachers and formators do not just translate what they do inside the classroom into their own online teachings. So where do we begin then? We begin with context. We need to know where the students and the teachers are. But sometimes, we also need to know where our parents are. That is why it is important to have somebody in the school who will oversee the homeschool relation. Homeschool relation officer is tasked in promoting a supportive, cooperative, and collaborative relationship between parents and the school. It, is, it also creates a space for discussion on common concerns and issues related to the educative process, 
especially now that there are new processes in school that needs the awareness and support of the parents. Second, we also need to know the context of the students by giving a survey, by knowing first where they are. So in Ateneo de Sambuanga University, we have what we call the psychological testing program. This is a personality inventory for the youth. The psychological testing program of the Ateneo de Sambuanga Senior High School Guidance Office utilizes the personality inventory for the youth or the PY, PIY to help the counselors assess the student's emotional and behavioral adjustment, family character and interactions, as well as the school adjustments and academic ability. The administration of this standardized test follows strict protocol set by the Ateneo Center for Testing and Measurement to ensure a valid and reliable assessment, as well as reduction of measurement error. The results are then forwarded to the guidance office for feedbacking to the students. The feedbacking of the result to the students has been very helpful to them as well as to the counselors as it fosters awareness of their own tendencies, strengths, and weaknesses. This also facilitates insights in the students as well as given that they will reflect on the results afterwards. This also helps students work on their weaknesses and maximize their strengths. The PYI test feedbacking sessions are great help to the counselors as well as because they are able to identify students needing immediate attention emotionally and behaviorally and cater to them and their needs. The objectives for the psychological testing program are as follows. First, for the students to be more aware of themselves, their personality, and their tendencies. Second, for the students to work on their weaknesses while being aware and maximizing their strength. And third, for the students to gain insight into themselves and how they act towards others. Fourth, for the counselors to be able to help the students identified as needing immediate attention. The third way in knowing the context of the students is an online mode of learning survey. It's good for a school to know again where our students, our parents, and our teachers are. So it's good to know and conduct a survey on how they are doing in their online learning as well as the formation that we are giving to them. So the Ateneo de Sambuanga University Senior High School Unit started its online mode of learning as a requisite to the new normal set up, brought up by the pandemic. The school has revised its traditional approaches to be able to adapt to the new school set up, such as the implementation of the synchronous or the S mode and the asynchronous or A mode type of classroom setup and making use of the online platforms intended for learning. The school aims to continue its vision and mission to be able to provide an avenue conducive for learning. However, the school administrators, faculty and staff, and students are experiencing difficulty adjusting to the new normal. Okay? The school administration wants to guarantee that we develop program and activities appropriate to the students' current needs through conducting a survey that would also identify the current situation of the school's performance regarding its system and approaches to the new normal school setup. The five areas concerns that the survey covers are as follows. First, personal concern, social concern, educational concerns, career concerns, and spiritual concerns. Identifying these concerns would allow the school administration, formation offices, and teachers to conduct suitable program activities as well as making the necessary adjustment to be able to deliver a more conducive and effective learning strategies, strategies for the students 
in the new normal classroom setup. The total respondent of this survey are 1,170 students, both from grade 11 and 12. This is the present situation of Ateneo de Sambuanga University Senior High School Unit, and there are a lot of observable things that we can notice in the survey. And even though the school is struggling in transitioning to the new normal setting, we can still observe that everyone, the school administration, the faculty and the staff, and the students are trying to thrive. The school is making the necessary adjustment to be able to deliver a more conducive and effective way of learning to our dear students. Though this survey, through this survey, the students did realize something amazing. They are grateful that even in this difficult situation, okay, they understood that they have the option to be grateful and to pursue and persevere even with the present trials that we are experiencing right now. After knowing the context of our students, I guess the next question to ask, what would be the theme of our formation program for this school year? Okay. So here in our school, we try to develop the spiritual, psychological, and emotional resiliency of our students. So all our formation activities and program is geared towards forming a spiritual, psychological, and emotional resilience students or Athenians. So Wednesday is devoted for formation activities. The students and teachers, they take time or they take a break from their academic work and tasks, and they just focus on their spiritual, psychological, and emotional well-being. We call it Manresa Wednesdays. All our formation activities are done every Wednesday, like homeroom, homeroom guidance, group guidance, club activities, recollections, and Aguila Online, which is our online radio, community radio for our unit. Again, knowing the context of our students, and teachers, and parents is very important. And it goes with number two, we need to develop a more focused formation program. The third one is the need to establish communication. This pandemic has brought us spaces and restrictions. Therefore, it's important to find effective ways to communicate to our teachers, parents, and students. Other than what we have available in our teaching and learning um, experience, like going to Zoom or Google Meet, it's also important to find a good medium wherein we can communicate faster and better to our students and teachers. Live streaming is a powerful in delivering flawless live events to viewers. It is a new reality, bringing people together in the safety of their home. The biggest advantage of live streaming services is that a broader audience will be able to experience the event or the formation session. Live streaming on Facebook or YouTube allows teachers and formators to discuss lessons without the interruption of unmuted mics and distracting backgrounds. Students watch the lessons and formation sessions through a public Facebook or YouTube link, but instructors can still interact with their students by reading questions posted in the comment sections. Processing of students' experiences in the live streaming session is very important to deepen the experience. Processing can be done during homeroom period. Now on our best practices. For spiritual formation, again, it's good to develop a more focused formation program. That is why for spiritual formation, we focus on forming a spiritual resilient um, student as well as teacher. So first, we have what we call the RDL program or the Retreat in Daily Life. It's a joint formation program between RSP Law Department and the Campus Ministry Office, which replaces traditional retreat program 
of Ateneo de Sambuanga University Senior High School. Okay? And then, which are actually done mostly offline. Main methods of prayer for RDL are as follows. First, we have the Ignatian discernment. Ignatian discernment is done individually. They pray on their own. And number two, the spiritual conversation is being done in groups of five. This program is an eight-day program integrated into the ISF 122 uh, class delivered via prayer module, prayer journal module format. The RDL module contains all the activities with time suggestions, instructions, and expected outputs. So how do we do it? On day one, we call it My Sacred Space. So each student will be asked to make their own prayer space at home, where they will be praying for the duration of the RDL. He or she will submit a picture of his or her sacred space and short explanation to the ISF 122 teacher. Day one is entitled Stop, Look, and Listen, and they do prayer pool exercises on their module, on their RDL module. Submission of their answers, they need to submit their answers to their ISF teacher afterwards. Day two to five. This time, the students, they try to discover their desire and values. Each student will be held to articulate their own discernment question by individually praying the discernment exercises for four days found in their module, in their RDL module. Okay? And they need to do journaling. They journal their own prayer experiences and to be written in their RDL module. Day six is a group sharing or group spiritual conversation. Students in group of five and six will come together online during their ISF 122 s mode or synchronous class to share about their answers to what they have written in their module. This will be supervised by the teacher and the formators. The group will submit a common group paper about their sharing, okay? And they have to submit one screenshot with the date and timestamp. Time and they need to submit it again to their teacher. Final individual reflections for day seven and eight. Here, students will have two days for prayer and reflection. And afterwards, they will write their final reflection paper for the RDL experience. Second is the psychological formation. We need to equip our teachers and staff psychological first aid skills in order for them to be able to assist our students and other teachers well. So first we have the online kamustahan. Okay? It is an online psychological first aid for our Ateneo de Sambuanga faculty and staff. The COVID-19 is at the peak around March 2020 and many were affected emotionally and mentally brought to us by the pandemic. The school initiated this psychological first aid as an intervention and also to lend a helping hand to those individuals whose mental health are affected. The Mental Health Wellness Council, who are composed of the different guidance counselors in each unit, also conducted a group psychological first aid to the different offices of the university. This helped our faculty and staff to thrive despite the difficult situation that we are experiencing as a university. Conversation from the Heart is another activity that revolves around psychological first aid identifying the importance and significance of conversation between two people at this time of the pandemic. This was given to the different offices of the university from the basic education unit to higher education unit. Psychological first aid is not 
counseling, but rather it is an approach or a process in helping one another, attending to one's present need. The process of the PFA is explained in four words. First, look. This is assessing the behavior or knowing the symptoms that the client is manifesting. Second, listen. We listen with compassion and without judgment. Third, link. We also connect them to concerned units where their needs can be addressed. Next is self-care. Always remember that you need to take good care of yourself before filling the cup of other people. Know that we cannot give what we do not have. The importance of basic attending to psychological first aid is indeed significant, but basic attending is also an essential part to our daily communication to other people. Basic attending is a way of communicating properly. The next program that we have is what we call Lifeline. Students Helping Students is a formation program intended to train students who are willing to be the extended arms of the Senior High School Guidance Office. This program is a special service of the office in which it's based on the assumption that students can help other students. Given the limited number of guidance counselors in the unit and the arising needs of the students that are wide in range, the program seeks to provide a support system to empower the lifeline facilitators in harnessing and enhancing their psycho-emotional, academic, and social aspects through the training, through training and sessions prepared for, for them by the office. Such activities will make them ready, equipped somehow, and more understanding and accepting of themselves and of others. Next is what we have, the Ketal 2, or how are you in English, okay? It's all about um, asking students to talk about their experiences, which is done through the Aguila online, okay? The pandemic seems to have affected our psychological well-being amidst the crisis that we are experiencing right now. The importance of mental health, again, will always play a major role in one's life because it impacts one's thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Developing resiliency, instilling hope, showing perseverance, and strengthening relationship is part of the coping skills of a person. The objective of this program is to share the stories of resiliency amidst the pandemic and to encourage fellow students to develop hope and deepen their faith in these trying times. This is also to promote productivity and effectiveness in school activities and work and to be able to adapt to change in life and cope with adversity. And lastly, this is to help students develop healthy interpersonal relationships. Now for social action. Since engagement and immersion is not possible this school year, we shifted our attention to awareness and dialogue. Awareness, making our students and teachers socially aware on what's happening around us. Students and teachers helping other people in spite of them being affected by the pandemic. And these are our activities. First, we have the Aguila Cares. This is students helping other students go to school. This is a fundraising campaign to help our poor scholars in this new normal. So students and teachers our fellow students and teachers donated laptops and other gadgets and they also donated money to give free load access to our students for them to go and to have access to online learning. Second, we also have what we call the Tabang Bicol for the survivors of the Typhoon Rolling. 
Okay? We try to develop the awareness of our students about what's happening outside Sambuanga, okay? to develop the social awareness of our students. And because they were moved on what's happening in other places other than Sambuanga City, they were moved to give what they have. They were able to transcend their own challenges and limitations by helping other people. The third one, which is similar to Tabang Bicol, is the Ahon Luzon. The students donated money and other goods for the survivors of Typhoon Ulysses. So here, we were able to see how our students somehow were able to transcend beyond their own limitation and challenges. And this is a good formative activity to develop social awareness and social resiliency among our students. There is a Chinese saying that goes, if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, if you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. If you want happiness for a lifetime, help somebody. Happiness is found in helping others. Research has found many examples of how doing good in ways big or small not only feels good but also does us good. For instance, the well-being boosting and depression lowering benefits of volunteering is beneficial for our students and teachers. To end, COVID-19 has changed everything. All our academic and formation programs had been changed. Everything that we plan must be scrutinized against the current restrictions. Plans for programs are made, then sometimes abandoned, and we start again trying to continue to do our ministry as best as we can. Externally, everything is different in school. We see labels of external boundaries, that separate us from each other. Mass shields us from each other, depending on how you view it. We each live in our little separate space each day. But that is what our Christian faith is about, embracing challenges. Yet, as we try to sustain our formation program, something remains unchanged and touch that is the desire to give from our students and teachers the desire to live the desire to be creative and continue to reach out to so many people mark the resilient and magnanimous heart of each one of us the externals have changed for sure but our faith and desire for faith and community has not been diminished. Thank you. This is Wow. Thank you, thank you, Brother Jeff, and thank you, Ma'am Janine, for those wonderful presentations. Before we we move on to the Q&A portion. Let me just read some of the um, greetings and appreciation of our, uh, of our delegates, our, our participants. Ito si, Fad, si Mr. Raymark Mata. Allow me to extend our sincerest appreciation and gratitude to both speakers for a very substantial and comprehensive sharing. We hope it's possible to receive two email the synthesis so that we can share to others. So we'll try to do that. Uh, Mr. Mata, see Miss Mary Jean uh, Ibanez, uh, sabi niya kanina, thank you for your shared experiences. God bless you. Power word, cheat proofing, sabi niya, especially sa, sa talk ni Miss uh, Ms. Janine. And then, uh, we, we thank Brother Jeff for reminding us that this period is a foundational era in human history where things are being replaced 
and transform. Thus, going back to the basics, is an important strategic reaction to continue promoting human flourishing and survival. Brother Jeff highlighted the characteristics of the people who are either thriving, surviving, struggling, and under crisis. People who are thriving are calm and steady, able to take things in, str in stride, perform consistently, able to take a feedback and focus, able to communicate effectively and have normal patterns and appetite. People are just surviving or exhibiting nervousness, sadness, inconsistent in terms of performance, irritated and gets easily overwhelmed, as trouble, sleeping, and so on. So you can, you can detect from your students who are exhibiting those. Those are struggling and crisis-driven people are having the extremes of those mentioned. So now these are the skills needed in the new normal, according to Brother Jeff. Digital and technical skills, creativity, resiliency, adaptability, collaboration, and communication. And he also discussed traps in the new normal. Academic, new academic trap, no? Kaya people are talking about Maslow before Bloom. Alam niyo naman si Maslow, no? Si Abraham Maslow talked about the hierarchy of needs, human needs. Yung pinakamababa, ang pinaka-lowest level niya ay physiological or biological needs. Yun daw ang unang dapat natin masatisfy. No? Kailangan hindi tayo gutom. Kailangan maayos ang environment natin, ang, ang, uh, ang, ang basic needs natin ay na, na ibibigay sa atin bago tayo mag-boops sa susunod na level ng ating psychological needs. Ang pinakamataas niyan, self-actualization. So dahan-dahang akit nun. Ito namang si, si, si Bloom, ay yung taxonomy of learning no? from comprehension, uh, practice, uh, ang tawag dito, si, uh, hanggang sa synthesis, pinakamataas synthesis. So sinasabi ng mga akademisya ngayon, Maslow before Bloom. Nang nasa isip natin. Siguraduhin natin na ang physiological needs, biological needs ng mga estudyante natin ay maayos, malino na ibibigay. Pati yung sense of security. So bago pa yung academic needs. No? Ito meron online migration trap. When many teachers simply use the old face-to-face -face methodologies using online technology. Then uh, brother talked about his recommendations. Begin with context. Enhance homeschool relationship and so, and so forth. Including the psychological first aid tip, uh, tips. And I do not want to reduce our opportunity for interaction by repeating you everything from the notes. So let us start with the open forum. If you have a question, just write them in the Q&A box. So uh, are we ready for the open forum? Hello, are you still with me? <laughs> Marlon, can I see the members of the panel? Nawawala yung ating technical support. Good afternoon, Sir Alan. Hi, Jenny. Nawawala yung ating... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, kumusta? Maganda ang uh, mga presentations ninyo and people are appreciative. No? I I'll Dapat just uh, read some of them para bago tayo magpunta sa mga tanong nila. Meron dito mga, mga uh, expression of appreciation. Sabi ni Ms. Mary Jean Ibanez, I love it when it is emphasized that assessments must be, duly, uh, must be augmented in the skill development of the teachers in this time of the pandemic. No? Uh, tama yun. Tapos ito naman si Sister Maria Evangeline Nakila na RVM. Congratulations to the two sharers, Ms. Janine Dolorico and Brother Jeff. So inspiring for me, very informative and uh, on, on how I could assist our students, teachers and staff on their issues in social and emotional learning. So thank you, sister, for that feedback. So now we go, we go to the question and answer portion. Ito, hindi ko kung sino una sasagot sa inyo. Brother, Ms. Janine, can a guidance coordinator who is not a registered guidance counselor facilitate the same program in counseling? Para may pinagdadaanan ito si Anonymous. <laughs> Can a guidance coordinator who is not a registered guidance counselor facilitate the same program in counseling? Who would like to go first? Okay, sige. Um, well, good afternoon uh, to our all, uh, partic participants for this afternoon. Well, to answer that question, 
ideally, <laughs> the guidance coordinator should be a registered guidance counselor. However, we do realize that there are certain circumstances and factors why there might be schools wherein the guidance coordinator are not registered guidance counselor yet. Okay, uh, and for those schools whose uh, coordinators not yet are GCs, uh, as for me, I think as long as he or she is uh, experienced, capable, skilled, and knowledgeable to lead the group, and is currently working to secure the licensure, um, I think that would do, given the circumstances that, that, that the school have regarding that matter. Okay, thank you, Ms. Jen. Brother, would you like to, to yes, take Alan, on that? Um, Sa context naman sa provinces, I guess, uh, like what Ms. Janine mentioned, um, ideally, and it's a government requirement that our coordinator should be a licensed uh, guidance counselor. But given our uh, case here in the provinces where registered guidance counselors are scarce, sometimes we allow. Okay, but good thing in our school now we have one uh, registered guidance counselor, uh, yeah, coordinator. Uh, wherein the other guidance counselors can handle basic counseling skills. They can run the basic program that we have. Uh, but for more complex cases, we repair them to a more competent and qualified ones. Okay. So thank you. So here are some other affirmations from Raquel Reyes. The pandemic did not change the generosity of the school community. In fact, I think it has strengthened it. So I think we all agree with that. No, We have witnessed that. From Marco Discarga, it's affirmation. Yeah, thank you to the both to the to the two speakers for a meaningful meaningful sharing. We gained a lot of insights on how to deal with the social and emotional concerns of the school community. Thank you, Mr. Marco, for that. Uh, Mr. Daniel Duca, do you have program on social and emotional learning for printed module approach? Ayan. So so we know that a lot of schools. Nationwide, even the public schools, no, they are not doing online for for obvious reasons. No, some some communities do not have uh, online facilities, uh, and and they cannot do that. So most of them are doing modular. So what do you what do you suggest them to to to, to be doing? What do you recommend? So we start with Mom uh, Janine. Yes, uh, basically in our school, in Third School of Quezon City. Our school uh, education continuity plan is uh, uh, basically conducted through online learning. So we don't really have uh, printed modules for uh, social and emotional learning because, again, we conduct uh, our, on our, our continuity plan through online uh, learning or online distance learning. However, uh, if there are schools who are, of course, doing the modular type of uh, education at this time, again, uh, you can come up with a module that would address the social and emotional learning. But I would like to emphasize that all programs, whether it is done online or it is done through a module, that there is really a need for an assessment. You should assess the, the social and emotional uh, needs uh, of your students and the school community. Because there are a lot of uh, references and resources available online that you can download and you can base your programs with or your modules with. But uh, sometimes it will not work on your school simply because hindi yun yung need ng school. So first things first, before you come up with any program, either modular or you, you, you implement it online, please do uh, an assessment first, that which okay. primarily would highlight the needs, social and emotional needs of the student and the whole school community. Okay. What do you think, brother? Okay, so in our case here in Sambuanga City, uh, we did a survey at the beginning of the school year and we have 8% of our students who don't have access to internet connection because we have students coming from a nearby provinces from Polo, Tawi-Tawi, and Sibugay, and some we have scholars. So who uh, basically they don't have access to internet connection. So we don't want to leave our students behind. So um, all our formation activities like the RDL, which is the second quest, the third question here, uh, our RDL, our spiritual uh, formation, our uh, other uh, psycho-emotional formation, we have module. We distribute the module, module together with the academic module. 
because we have students na wala talagang access sa internet connection. Mm-hmm. And in our case in Sambuanga, we have problem with uh, internet connections as well kasi uh, masama lang yung panahon, walang internet connection sa Sambuanga and we have brownouts, right? So yung module is really very convenient. But uh, formation is always guided, supervised. So paano? Uh, <laughs> hindi lang pwede bigay yung module and they're on their own like in academics kasi Correct. formation is different. Diba? Counseling is different. You cannot just leave the person with modules. So, one accessible um, medium that we have is cell phone. Lahat ng mga sudyante may connection sa cell phone. So, uh, for those students who cannot attend the online sharing and online supervision and counseling, we call them individually. So, medyo nakakapagod pero this is one way that we can exert cura personalis or personal care to our students. Okay. Ako, let's... Uh... Maganda sagot ni nilang dalawa. No? Thank you po. Uh, second, the uh, next question is, this is also from Anonymous. Good afternoon. We are If we are to create our own measure of social and emotional learning and behavior, in your experience, which aspects should we focus on assessing for our students? Oldo, parang nasagot yan kanina din sa mga ano nyo. Would you like to... Uh, to elaborate a little? Well, well I guess uh, I keep saying this even in my sharing earlier that uh, uh, I guess one of the top uh, priority that we need to find out or to focus on is really knowing the emotional state uh, of our students and basically all the personnel in our uh, in our institution. So again, if you would come up with any program or any activity, again, please uh, uh, assess first the emotional state of your uh, students and personnel. Okay, brother. Okay, one way to assess uh, our uh, the atmosphere of social and emotional learning um, atmospheres at school is basically happiness. So medyo a little bit cheesy, but uh, I guess if our students are happy and our teachers are happy and our parents are happy, we can say that we have a positive environment. So, uh, so yun, um, importante yun to, to create um, Um, a kind of safe and happy environment sa school. Uh, somehow, it's very difficult to assess emotional and social learning ng bata. Kasi, like in any other formation, uh, other than, yeah, in, in face-to-face, we can see directly kung ano nangyayari sa mga, sa mga bata. <laughs> Mas madali identify yung psychological first aid. Madali yun, makikita natin kasi yung mga moderators nakikita nila yung behavior ng bata kung face-to-face. Mm-hmm. Pero challenging ito kapag online. Kasi yun na nga, uh, hindi na ko on yung camera ng mga bata kasi yun na nga, poor internet connection and there are other factors. ba diba? So, I guess um, what we can do, uh, maybe I'm, I'm segue na ako, is to really um, train our teachers to make sure our teachers are okay first. <laughs> kasi sila yung mga frontliners. If our teachers are okay, if our administrators also are okay, kasi stressful din yung environment nila, and we have to make sure also okay ang parents. Kasi kung hindi okay ang parents, kahit maganda yung formation program we have in our school, yeah. happy sila sa school, uh, since nasa bahay sila, hindi okay. So medyo it will affect the disposition of the of the students that's why a part of the social emotional learning is also formation for our parents to make sure that they are okay unlike before kasi sabi ng mga bata sa sa survey namin kung may problema sila sa bahay they go to school kung may problema sa school stress they go to sa, sa bahay doon sila pero ngayon wala na nasa bahay sila eh. stress okay. sa school stress sa bahay and the mother and the father asking him to do some errands. So, medyo... Bawal sila lumabas. <laughs> Bawal lumabas. So, stressful. <laughs> I guess, um, uh, we also have to consider yung <laughs> assessing, other than assessing our uh, emotional and learning atmosphere of our school, also atmosphere and emo- yung sa bahay. Kasi kung okay sa bahay, okay din sa school. Okay, thank you. Maiba naman ako, brother Jeff, no? Uh, unahin na dito sa tanong ko. A good number of your students are from a different cultural background, from from uh, as Catholic Christians, no? But we know spirituality is an important aspect of social emotional well being. Our formation programs, at least in majority of the Catholic schools, are geared towards Christian spirituality. We have online masses for students, online recollections and sharing using the internet. Is it any different 
shepherding to those who are culturally different from us during this time? Um, magandang question yun. So, like what um, Miss Janine mentioned na uh, um, we, uh, sorry, medyo na wala. So, uh, given the context na sa Sambuanga, because the school is a little bit diverse, so around 35% of our students or even more, 40% of our students are already Muslims or from other denomination. So major challenging ngayon. Pero yung tanong nun, uh, when it comes to um, psycho-emotional um, um, formation, medyo hindi nakakaiba. Pareho sila. Okay? Kasi pareho yung pinagdadaanan nila regardless kung ano yung culture nila, kung ano yung social context nila. Uh, pare-pareho yung pinagdadaanan ng mga students, ng mga teachers, at ng mga parents. But like what Miss Janine mentioned, parang importante yung to equip the students to 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 have uh, for for emotional psycho-emotional um, skills is to teach them the capacity to reflect because if they have the capacity to reflect, um, they can also handle their emotional parang um, what do you call that? Their emotional um, well-being. So uh, when it comes to reflection, we teach them reflection. Okay? And uh, parang kailangan yun i-align sa spiritual, sa retreat. Okay? Uh, for, for Catholic, we teach them the examen and the spiritual conversation according to our Catholic and, and Jesuit way of, of praying, which is very important. Pero for this year, we have one coordinator, one office, who is really meant to focus on formation for Muslims. A spiritual oh, okay. formations. So while the, the Catholics are having masses, we still have online masses, and we have the different um, liturgies in our school. While the Catholics are are going to that um, services, yung Muslim menos lang counterpart formation session. So okay. um, just last week, um, we we invited um, a speaker from the U.S. and he, he was able to speak about the psycho emotional resiliency in the Quran. So okay. maganda yun, parang after the talk, sabi ko, wala nang pakakaiba. <laughs> Lahat tayo, we are undergoing the same thing, di ba? And being resilient in this time of pandemic, common sa ating lahat. And I can, and I'm happy that uh, lahat ng values on resiliency and emotional well-being sa Quran is somewhat related to our own Christian values. So yun. So walang pakakaiba when it comes to formation, but when it comes to spirituality, uh, spirituality, yes. But when it comes to religion and other spiritual one, uh, we have to cater to the needs of our Muslim brothers and sisters. Yes, correct. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I think, Ma'am Jani, sa atin walang masyadong problem. Pero siguro meron din konting, may, may mga ilan-ilan din uh, culturally different from us uh, Chris, Catholic Christians, no? Yes, yes, uh, uh, Sir Alan. Uh, however, however, I think our feed, uh, our faith education enrichment department will be more credible to to share about that. Uh -oh. However, uh, they are very our feed is very uh, visible uh, in providing uh, services and activities. Uh, we're in the encourage all parents and families to attend uh, any activities that we prepared for them, whether they came from different backgrounds or different. Uh, uh, Kumbaga, they share different uh, faith than, okay. of course, the faith that we, we practice. And if I may add lang din sa sharing ni brother kanina, kasi yes, I really please. like the home the homeschool relationship. And when it comes to assessing, yes, brother Jeff is correct when he said that sometimes it's really hard <laughs> to assess emotions with using the screen. Because di ba nga, the connectivity can interfere with that one. So it's really important that you really connect with the family, with the parents, with the guardian. Kasi they are the one at home. Maliktad na before the parents would come to us and would ask, How, how's my children in school? I don't, parang they are, they are a totally different person when uh -oh. they're in the school and they're at home. So now, it's very important that we reach out to the parents, to the guardian, and to ask what's really going on, what are the struggles, are the problems, the concerns that they think, that they have observed with their children that goes beyond the screen of what we really can see by just the screen. Okay. Now, may follow-up question ako sa'yo. Palagay ko, ikaw makakasagot ito. What is the informed consent for online counseling? This is from Mr. Joshua Kim Terol. What is the informed consent? Well, basically, dinosaur? informed consent is uh, the, the form that we give our students and parents. Uh, since we, when, if we're in the school setting, most of our students, basically, if we're in the basic education, are uh, considered minor. So, we need to provide an informed consent. Uh, we're in the parents would give sort of the consent uh, that they're allowing their children to have a counseling session with the 
with the counselor. Uh, now that we're doing things online, uh, for our school, the informed consent is already embedded in the uh, agreement uh, form that the parents uh, filled out and signified once they enroll their children in uh -huh. our school. However, on top of that, syempre, some parents would tend to forget and sometimes they don't read the long, uh, no, the long form or agreement form, right? They just click, I understand. And, okay. uh, we provided them with uh, orientation programs, both for parents and students. Again, discussing them the programs, what are the services that we would give them, the activities, and discussing the uh, privacy confidentiality issues uh -huh. that yeah. most informed consent is all about. Correct. And on top of that, every counseling session that we would have with our students, we have a sort of a counseling skill where we would read to them what will go on when you agree to have the session with your counselor. Okay. When we have parent conferences, we also read the same counseling skill. Uh, when we, uh, for the grade school students, uh, we required the parents to accompany uh, their children because that should be the practice. However, there are parents who would uh, opt to not attend the counseling session because sometimes they really want their children to be at ease, be comfortable, uh -oh. and sometimes it doesn't happen that way if the, the, the parents is also doing the counseling uh, session. Okay. Oh, God. Totoo yan, no? Ngayon, ito naman kay Leia Arcangel. I think uh, a lot of our small schools can resonate with this question. Sabi niya, we have almost 600 students in the basic education but only one guidance counselor since we are in the province. In the guidance program, we combine modules and online learning no? modalities. Our guidance counselors are having a hard time checking, reading, and going through the numerous printed modules. What can you suggest to make your work easier, to ease the burden? Ikaw, Brother Jeff, baka meron ka suggestion para kay Ms. Lea. Uh, challenging na to. Sa, sa school namin, we have 1,800 students and we only have four guidance counselors. So uh, like what I've said in my talk, uh, just to reach to many people, I guess, live streaming uh, of coping, um, uh, teaching coping skills and ba basic attending skills is really very helpful. So in my wala case... Wala silang online, ano, brother? Ayun din, wala. <laughs> okay, so I guess um, uh, kung wala talaga, kung, kung hindi kaya sa, sa live streaming, I guess, really calling the person Okay, through phone is really very helpful. So um, every month we have this deliberation, parang kumustahan. We gather all the moderators. For example, for grade 11, we have around 24 moderators. We gather them together and we just talk, sino talaga sa mga sudyante dito kailangan talaga ng tulong, parang ganun. And pati yung homeschool coordinator. And we have to identify yung sino talaga yung essential, kailangan talagang tawagan. At yun, at sino yun wala talagang access sa internet connection. So personal care talaga. We just have to call them and to Identify kumustahan. Kung may problema, I guess we can do uh, not counseling pero parang a basic conversation just to help the kid. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Bob Janine, what do you think? Uh, well, in, since we don't have the modular ano, approach, uh, however, I agree with, uh, with Brother Jeff na although we keep on emphasizing that uh, there's a need to assess. Uh, it, it, I understand that there are certain circumstances where in assess, assessment uh, will be a bit difficult to obtain. Kasi nga, you, we don't have the means to do it. So really, uh, maybe a phone call could help yeah. if that's the most, uh, uh, that's the easiest or quickest way that we could somehow identify uh, students who are at risk who would really need our help and assistance then and maybe with the module uh, maybe the module should be created in such a way na it wouldn't be tedious on the part Correct. of the the counselor who would check it so oh. maybe it should be structured in such a way that it would be very beneficial to those students who would uh, go through the module but not tedious on the part of the Anna so maybe more on self-reflection uh -oh. Correct, correct. May I add, that, Alan? Uh, the, oh, sorry. Uh, the counselor would check. It is more on an alert. Okay, thank you. Uh, sige, brother Jeff. Sige, may I add? Uh, I guess siguro mga galit to yung mga parents sa akin kasi uh, what we can do, uh, best practice namin sa, <laughs> dito sa Sambuanga, <laughs> is to form our parents to, to, to for, for basic attending skills. Okay. Kasi kung may problema sila sa mental health or difficulties in academics or other formation, I guess we teach the basic um, 
attending skills and first aid sa mga parents kasi sila naman nandun sa bahay. So, uh, at least alam na nila kung ano yung pwedeng gawin muna bago i-refer sa guidance counselor. Oo. Yes. Ito related yung question dyan. Kasi siguro nga wala silang guidance counselor or medyo maliit yung school nila. No? Is it possible to train teachers regarding basic handling skills and guidance counseling? Okay ba? Anong pros and cons ng itatrain mo ang teachers? So wala talagang formal training. Kayo-kayo lang sa school, itatrain mo yung co-teachers mo na siya mag-handle ng mga uh, guidance and counseling issues ng, ng school. Jenny? Uh, well, basically, as I keep on saying earlier, ideally, <laughs> there should be at least a registered guidance counselor who would uh, at least facilitate and run the guidance office. But again, there are circumstances na wala talaga. Wala talagang uh, 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 guidance counselor, even hindi na coordinator, eh, guidance counselor na lang in certain schools. So yes, uh, whether you have a, a guidance office or not, I think it's very important, to, especially at this time, to train your teachers to also have basic uh, attending, uh, listening skills, or sort of counseling 101. So it, it it would be it it would be very beneficial for them. We would come up with uh, webinars or online uh, program or online training so that somehow they could be equipped and be somehow skillful in how to handle uh, simple cases. Uh, and another another thing, there are a lot of uh, online resources that they can uh, make use of kapag they want to train themselves. Maraming online courses also that uh -oh. uh, that would help us and teach us how to handle uh, students or somehow counseling 101 na. Uh, and, and maybe, uh, ano din, the, if at least there is one present of a counselor who could do uh, mm -hmm. parang uh, training for the teachers. Okay. Okay. Uh, would you like to say something about that, uh, brother? Uh, yeah. Um, I guess... Um... Kasi marami ding students at marami ding mga moderators. I guess yung ongoing din yung formation namin. Even before, uh, three years ago, we already have um, regular formation for our moderators, especially for our moderators and teachers and parents on basic uh, first aid, uh, psychological first aid. But at least, um, nandun na siya. So regular siya, meaning annually we, we train them. So, so okay na yun. So we also tap our guidance counselors from the college. Na, who are more equipped and who are more experienced to, to train our moderators and, and teachers. Okay. And, and, and Raquel Reyes agreed with you. Sabi niya, I agree that advisors should be equipped with facilitating skills to help the counselors. Homeroom advisors and guidance counselors should be partners. So we cannot agree with you more. Talagang dapat talaga yan. And let me pause with the questions and, so that we can read some of the affirmations and comments. Sabi ni Mr. Josefino Malvas, I'm very satisfied with the insights presented. Kudos to the speakers. Thank you, sir. On, the, on behalf of the, the presenters. <laughs> Thank you. Hope we can get a copy of these two talks, either soft or hard copy. Sige po, titignan natin kung paano natin ipapadala sa inyo. Ms. Claude Feliz Ganaban. Sister Felicissima Ibay. Saludo ka sa inyo, Ms. Janine and Brother Jeff. Jeff, thanks a lot. Sabi naman ni Mr. Ni Sister uh, ni Ms. Lunila Tabar, thank you very much for your very substantial and worth sharing thoughts and reflections. Thank you, Ms. Janine and Brother Jeff from Ar Arsenia Valimento. From Ms. Natividad Jacqueline, thank you very much, Brother Jeff, for your wonderful sharing. God bless you both, Ms. Janine and Brother Jeff. Thank you, sharers. Sending virtual hugs to all. Pinadalang kayo ni Mr. Joshua Kim Terol ng virtual hug. Thank you po. Sama nyo na ako doon. Thank you to the, to the speakers for a meaningful sharing. We gained a lot of insights on how to deal with the social and emotional concerns of the school community. This is from Mr. Marco Discarga. Thank you very much, speakers, for very comprehensive and informative sharing. God bless from Ms. Pontillas. Thank you very much, Janine and bro uh, Brother Jeff from Ana Marie Villa. Congratulations to both of you, Ma'am Janine and Brother Jeff. God bless you from Elsie Gamosa and uh, from Angela Christine Okao. Thank you and congratulations to the sharers. You have learned a lot and at the same time inspired and motivated to thrive 
in this new normal. God bless both of you. Okay, so now we move on to the questions again. Eto, tignan natin itong susunod na question. Is there a danger when it comes to giving advice to very young learners? Ano kayong pinaggagalingan ito si Anonymous? <laughs> Meron bang dapat tayong pag-ingatan pag nagbibigay tayo ng payo? O payo lang tayo ng payo? Brother. Oh. Ah, sige, sige, sige. Go Whoever ahead, is ready. Sige, go ahead, brother. <laughs> sige. So, basically, uh, giving advice is not uh, encouraged uh, during counseling session. Okay. Uh, counselors are, should not really provide uh, uh, advices to students. However, what we do is we help our students uh, come up with plans and steps on how they can actually solve or address the concerns uh, that they have. So, kumbaga, you're just there to facilitate and help them realize their potential, that they actually, they're actually have the skills, or they have what it takes to actually uh, respond to their situation. And if you can, as a counselor or as a teacher, what you can do is to tap uh, external factors such as the parents. If you think that you need to mediate because your student is having a hard time communicating uh, the concern to the parents, then that's the time that uh, you can uh, mediate and inter, inter, uh, intervene and uh, go directly to the parents and tell them that uh, these are the concerns raised uh, by your children, uh, by your child. I, uh, I think um, he's, he or she's having a hard time communicating this and that, uh, although he's being encouraged to take some steps to plan ahead. So again, Really, it's quite dangerous to tell students, specifically young learners, because they would definitely just look up to any adult and follow what uh, they sure. would suggest. Uh, but it is important to encourage them to believe in their own skills, in their own abilities, that they have what it takes to actually conquer whatever adversities that would come along in their way. Okay. Thank you. Um, Brother, would you like to say something about it? Okay, I guess uh, sinabi na na Miss Janine that we don't give advice in counseling, uh -oh. but we help the the students to to realize and to have their uh, own basic skills in in solving their own problems. So, uh, for uh, I just want to clarify that basic attending skills or basic attending um, activities or procedure is not counseling. Okay, so it's just basically kapag may tumawag sa moderator or teacher na may problema siya or gusto mag suicide. Ano yung gagawin ng teacher? Meron ba siyang skill just to be composed and to listen? And the, the, the basic thing that we need to know in basic attending skill is uh, just to determine kung ano yung pinagdadaanan ng mga bata and to refer the student to a more competent and qualified guidance counselors or counselors. So yun. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just a bit of announcement. Uh, please take note that the e-certificates will be made available within two to three weeks and will be sent to your registered email. So if you want to get your certificates, you try to fill out the evaluation form accurately on the link provided below. Because sometimes you're, you cannot, you're not encoding properly even your emails. No? So tumatalbog sa amin yung mga pinapadala namin sa inyo. So Punta kayo sa chat box and you can see there the link for the evaluation for those who want to evaluate. So I think that's about the time we have left. And, and most of the, the things here, probably Brother, uh, uh, brother Jeff and Ma'am uh, Janine can read some of these affirmations. Ang dami-dami nagpadala sa atin ng mga pagbati, congratulatory notes, ang mga pasasalamat. So thank you for responding to all our queries. Uh, these sessions... Uh, bring a lot of clarity to many of our issues. Salamat din sa mga nagtanong sa, sa, at sa, mga, sa nature ng mga sagot. No? Just a reminder, uh, before I give the, uh, the uh, just an affirmation for you because I will have to give you the token of uh, appreciation through this uh, certificate. I would like to recognize our shares today with their certificates of appreciation for their wonderful presence and the desire to be of help to us through their experiences in Claret, School of Quezon City, and Ateneo de Sambuanga. 
Hindi ko alam kung ba nilalagay mo yung certificate dyan, Marlon. Marlon is uh, assisting Stick. me here. Ayan. So, the Catholic Education Association of the Philippines presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Ms. Janine A. Doloricon, Register, Registered Guidance Counselor, in grateful recognition to, of her invaluable contribution as resource person during the CAP National Basic Education Commission Virtual Assembly on December 12, 2020. Signed, Sister Marisa Viri and Alan Arellano, Executive Director. Thank you, Bob Janine. And now, Brother Jeff, The, the Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines presents this certificate of appreciation to Brother Jeff U. Piquinto, Piquinto S.J. in grateful recognition of his invaluable contribution as resource person during the CEP National Basic Education Commission Virtual Assembly on December 12, 2020. Palakpakan naman natin silang dalawa. <laughs> now, let's go to my... Uh, I have a bit of synthesis here. We listen to the two sharers from two good Catholic school communities, Claret School of Quezon City and Ateneo de Zamboanga University Basic Education Unit. As the world continues to grapple with the restrictions and challenges brought upon us by the COVID-19 pandemic, the schools need to adjust, not only by fine-tuning the academic and curricular mode of deliveries, but by showing concern and care for the learners through the programs that would monitor their social and emotional well-beings. Our teachers, staff, and administrators are also experiencing stress and anxieties. They should first be able to transcend their personal difficulties for them to effectively care for their students. And here, our journey together means a lot for the members of the community. I'm happy that uh, Ms. Janet and Brother Jeff outline their school's responses to the perceived problems, actual and anticipated problems to social emotional well-being of the entire community. There are so many common patterns in their sharing, planning with the community, survey of need, needs, constant monitoring, review of programs in relation to the school community plan being implemented by the school, instituting kubustahan and opportunities for virtual school assemblies, and assurances for students that the world can weather this situation. Ms. Janine, meanwhile, highlighted developing better facilities for individual reach-outs, checking in to a guidance program that cares for their well-being, of ensuring that parents are not the main stressors at home, but a stable support mechanism that could propel their children to bloom and flourish as individuals. Brother Jeff emphasized that very positive impact of formative activities like outreach for the poor members of the community or even those beyond your school or localities because helping others bring not just immediate relief to the beneficiaries of support but uplifts the spirit of the giver who realizes his own purpose and vision. This experience of bringing joy to others cement the foundations of the young who live for others. As followers of Christ, the teacher, that is our mandate. Everyone is talking about the VUCA world. As a matter of fact, experts are now calling this period as the ultra VUCA world. The entire global environment, not just our schools, are experiencing volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. It is the entire world, which means the world institutions are groping to bring order to things. Governments, of the biggest countries are having problems as well. You have financial institutions, the global market, and during the Philippines, our economy is once again the laggard in Asia. These are situation, situations that must be understood in context, both by individuals and institutions, schools, stakeholders, and the, of the microscopic COVID-19 virus. The earliest possible that things will go back to normal is two or three years from now. And therefore, a lot of fine-tuning, adjustments, and creative solutions based on the experience would be needed. This session is about understanding our world now and how each institution could weather the storm. I expect that each and every institution is doing that now. The others which fail to do so have suffered closing their schools, although temporarily, hopefully, 
And in reality, 900 schools out of almost 900 schools out of the 14,000 ceased operations this school year. Hopefully, talaga temporarily, only half of the out of the 4.3 billion students enrolled in private schools last year came to us this year. But many of our Catholic schools try to protect their staff and teachers, and much that resources are bigger, we stay on. The pressure it brings, the education leaders are of an imaginable magnitude. But the mission lives on, and we continue to steer our communities. We are all in this together. We as a community of schools must know that CAP, together with the other private educational associations, continue to engage the government in other sectors to ensure that the policy environment would ease our burdens in private education. As you see, socio-emotional realities affect everyone, but we must be certain that we protect those who are the most vulnerable. And in our context, these are our learners who have never experienced nor imagined the things we consider as part of our realities now. Let us walk them through this and ensure that our future with them is paved. And so I would like to request you to keep still and join us in the closing prayer. But before this, let me thank once again our sponsors, Diwa, Rex, and Phoenix, the members of the National Basic Education Commission headed by Sister Felicitas Bernardo, SPC, the members of the Secretariat and BEC Unit headed by Ms. Diana Diane Balio, supported by Ms. Darlene Busmente and Marlon Quadrante. Finally, and once again, Salamat, Janine, and Brother Jeff. Please thank your school heads. I know they're watching. Father Mao of Claret and Father Karel of Ateneo de Zamboanga for letting you be with us today. Maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Let us now put ourselves in the presence of the Lord as we close this session with our prayer service prepared for us by St. Paul Campus Ministry Office. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us bless the Lord for His love endures forever. He made us in his own likeness. For his love endures forever. Arms outstretched, out, outstretched, he died on the cross. For his love endures forever. He rose again and brought us to the Father. For his love endures forever. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In silence, let us have a few moments of silence and talk to our Lord. Oh, no, that's not a reading.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And on, again, on behalf of Sister Marisa Biri, our President, and the National Board of CAP, Sister Felicida, Fel, Felicitas Bernardo SPC, our Chair, and the end the Commission, maraming maraming salamat po sa being part of this session. May we now sing our Huwarang Katoliko? For those who have not uh, completed the evaluation sheet, na dito po sa chat box, I-press nyo lang po yan, you'll be directed to the evaluation page. Automatic na po yan, napupunta sa amin. And then your certificate will be sent to you within two to three weeks. Kung totoo, kahalintunan ni Kristo. 
Educational resources are designed to make teaching and learning happen in the classroom, at home, or anywhere. Make teaching and learning more fun and engaging with the new DIWA textbooks. Fully aligned with the K-12 curriculum and the Department of Education's most essential learning competencies, DIWA textbooks provide complete and appropriate content that prepare students for higher education or employment. Now, with its new interactive digital format, DIWA textbooks can be broken down into digestible, easy-to-browse modules that include additional visual elements and up to 10 gamified quizzes per module. Reimagining the teaching and learning experience for distance education. Provide students with additional knowledge that are interactive, thematic, and interesting with DIWA Supplemental Educational Magazines or SEMS. SEMS are filled with articles and activities and come with a teacher's guide and editorial content that teachers can use as tools in designing effective learning experiences for students in the classroom. SEMS also contain interactive digital activities and can be used as an additional educational resource and reference material to augment students' learning sessions at home. Make meaningful learning experiences beyond the classroom with the power of genuine e-learning. With the ready-made interactive digital resources, and add-on contents found inside Genio e-learning. Teachers can save time in preparing materials for classroom lectures and discussions. Teachers can also maximize the collaboration tools as well as lesson and test authoring tools available in Genio e-learning so that students can learn safely at home, synchronously or asynchronously. Redefine student learning with Checkbox, our gamified assessment portal for grade school and junior high school students. Checkbox contains gamified drills that can be used in conducting quizzes and seat works, providing teachers and students with a blended learning environment. Using the tools and features in Checkbox, teachers can create tailored activities as well as monitor learners' performance in real time, helping students develop mastery in five major subject areas anytime, anywhere, and on any device. 
With DIWA's educational resources, teachers continue to be frontliners in nation building. Students become active contributors to the country's progress. And schools create a teaching and learning environment that defies any boundaries. Together, we give education the attention it deserves, all the time, everywhere. We are DIWA. We move the nation forward through education. Through the years, we have been your partner in innovative teaching and effective learning. Our teaching and learning resources and the professional development programs for teachers and school leaders speak of the alaga that you deserve as our collaborative partners. Now more than ever, we commit to Alagang Phoenix SIBS, the cornerstone of our mission in education. We vow to guide and support you in navigating uncertain paths in education today by providing holistic solutions that support instructional resiliency. With our MELCS compliant print and digital resources and programs, we help you feature-proof quality instruction. Distance learning must-haves for students, teachers, and learning coaches. Based learning experiences. Student-friendly activities that form self-directed learners. Replete with learning tasks that serve various instructional purposes. For advanced learners, for those who need more instructional support. My Distance Learning Buddy Series. A modular textbook series for the 21st century learner in the new normal. Six subjects, one learning package. MELC compliant. Easy to do learning tasks. Rich assessments that help inform learning and teaching. Phoenix Aralix. Beefing up our holistic edtech programs and responding to the demands of the new normal. Our new edtech programs have been designed to address your needs. Aralix Light. Beyond a learning management system. Aralix Flex empowers schools to effectively use learning technologies and resources. Redefining our commitment to advancing the standards in research and assessment to influence the quality of performance outcomes in schools and in the workplace. computer-based testing in the new normal. At Phoenix Sibs, we arm you with holistic and meaningful resources. For innovative teaching and effective distance learning. Nick Sibs, we help you get ready for the next in Philippine education.